Once you turn 18, it feels like you have to have your whole life together. But what if you don't get it together? What if you feel lost in life? Like where you thought you'd be is so far from where you are right now? It turns out we have a lot of big questions. The what is the meaning of life kinds of questions. The ones that keep you up at night, wondering if anyone else feels the same way. So we started a vlog to ask those questions. Questions like, how do you even become a real life functioning adult? How do you find the friends and figure out what to even do with your life? We can't promise the answers, but let's figure it out together. We are a collective group of young adults finding life, seeking to make a collective difference with our collective influence. So here we go. Today, we want to figure out who we are, what makes up our identity, and how does that relate to friendship and purpose? Our first meetup with our new friends went way better than I expected. I'm not sure I would have chosen to spend my time that way if Will and Jeff hadn't recommended it, but I did it and I actually enjoyed it. It's just nice to know that I'm not the only one who sometimes feels like I don't belong. I'm looking forward to having more conversations and becoming real life friends with these people. I invited everyone over to my apartment tonight, which is actually one of the first times I'm having people over since I moved here over a year ago. Ali's coming over so we can make pizza for everyone, but we had a backup just in case things didn't go as planned. Anyway, tonight we're just gonna get to know each other on a deeper level. She had to make the, the, the crust from scratch. Did you really? Oh, really? They were pounding in yeah. that. Yeah, they're like, it was like Maddie. We all agreed that our pizza was not terrible, so we're counted as a win. Our cooking struggles led to a great conversation about adulting, if that's a valid word, why 401ks and taxes are so complicated, and all the other things they don't teach you about in school. We, of course, had to settle our heads up rematch. It's rematch. Rematch. <laughs> Then we got real about identity and how that plays into our purpose in life. So we talked to Jeff. We have a friend who works at the office with us. We've referenced him several times now, but he was kind of just explaining to us, challenging us on how um, our identity plays a part in us even getting connected with other people, right? And one of his big takeaways for me personally was that you have to like first accept yourself before you think you can have any kind of meaningful connection with people around you. So let's unpack that a little bit. I think for me, it just kind of came to that common place of like, this is my identity in Christ. Like it's, I could care less what the world thinks of me or how I view myself, but as long as I have him in my life and the center of my life, I know who he calls me to be, I know who he says I am, and I know the emotions that comes behind it. Uh, I think for me, like I didn't really grow up like around church or like growing like, all that so it was very much just driven by like myself and by standards and they were always moving standards you know I think I'm even still on this journey of realizing that like God made us in his image and so if I really believe that then the things that I'm going to tell myself are going to be things that reflect someone made in the image of God. My identity isn't always based on my feelings and I might not feel like I am made in his image or feel like I am chosen or any of that but I am, and if I continually tell myself that, then I, the feelings might come, they might not, but it's true, and I need to just walk in that belief. Yeah, I think a lot of it is a choice on like what you're choosing to like put into your life, because like if you spend hours on Instagram like looking at all these other people are being like, oh, no one liked my photo, I'm gonna take it down or whatever, right. and then it's like, you know, you spend the same amount of time like thinking like, who does God say I am? Then like those results are gonna be drastically different. Yeah. So it's like, what are you choosing to like, Focus yeah, focus on, yeah. Do you guys feel like you know what your calling is in life? I'm a teacher, so I've always been passionate about the next generation. So that's always been my mission that I've seen is to help encourage and love on them and help kind of point them where I feel like, or I hope that God is wanting them to go. At the point in my life now, being 25, everybody's, you know, has always pushed me. You should be married, you should have kids, you should, be doing this, you should have had your degree, like all these things. And I'm just like, I just want to play music. Like, it seems weird and I've like, I put it off for a long time because it didn't seem valid. But it's like, I'm now realizing like, if that's what I'm passionate about, I have to do it. 
Okay, okay, okay. I got to pause right here because I don't want you to miss what we've talked about. Jessica mentioned that our identity isn't based on feelings, but on who God says we are. We've also learned that people have different experiences when it comes to this idea of calling. Like Jessica always knew what she wanted to do, and Christian is still figuring it out. And those are both okay. For me, I've actually struggled with the idea of having only one calling, which is what Jeff talked about. It may change over time. But as our callings change, does our identity? Let's jump back in, but let's talk about how identity affects our purpose. Andy Stanley has this quote that's uh, direction, not intention, determines destination. And I, I don't know, I've just been thinking about this a lot this year, of like I want to be a person that reads the Bible every day. And so but like my intention doesn't make that true. You know, it's like, what are my daily habits? Because I think what you do does determine like who you're becoming, but at the same time, like who you define yourself as also determines what you do. I don't know if I have like a real answer, but I would say that I'm the most uncomfortable in life. Like. I'm probably the, the worst person I've ever been in these times. Like, but anytime my identity and my purpose are not aligned, it's like, I'm probably not a very fun person to be around just because there's so much angst of like, nothing feels right. But I think it's that aligning your identity to who God says you are, and then living out your purpose, like with that first alignment. It's kind of meaningless without knowing your identity. Because to say that like you have a purpose, but yet you're just like, why am I doing this? Like, who am I doing this for? And so I think knowing your identity kind of leads you down that purpose. And then you're like, okay, this is why I do what I do. I feel like most people try to find their identity and their purpose instead of figuring out their identity first. Once you know your identity, then you're more free to live out your purpose instead of, you know, forcing it and trying to make your purpose your identity. It just doesn't work. I've done that a lot. And then, you know, once, I think once you find who you are in Christ and know that you're approved, you can go out there and just be free to just give it all to your, you know, your real purpose. I remember that like in the small group or like Bible study I was in in high school, the last thing we ever like did as a study was this Andy Stanley sermon we listened to. And he had like three chairs up on a stage and it was like, I don't remember what, who you want to be, what you want to do and where you want to go or something like that. And he said, before you ever know where you're going to go or what you're going to do, you have to define who you want to be. Dang, that was so good. Did you hear that? Jacob said, before you ever know where you're gonna go or what you're gonna do, you have to define who you want to be. And then Ali dropped this verse. Knowing the correct password, say master, master, for instance, isn't gonna get you anywhere with me. What's required is serious obedience, doing what my father wills. I can see it now at the final judgment, thousands strutting up to me and saying, Master, we preached the message, we bashed the demons, our God-sponsored projects had everyone talking. And you know what I'm gonna say? You missed the boat. All you did was use me to make yourselves important. You don't impress me one bit. It's so convicting for me because I think so often even like doing things like reading the Bible or like, I, like doing something big with my life, like sometimes it's almost like I'm doing this checkbox that do I have my God points? And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, that's not the right order. Like, it's when I realize who I am in Christ and that He did everything for me and that I can't do anything to earn that, that's when I can start to figure out who I am. And that's when I start, my purpose starts aligning with that. So guys, thanks so much for coming to hang out. I've never had guests in my house. So this is like super, super special for me. I feel very vulnerable, but like, I think we had great conversation because of that. Um, so we got to talk about identity and we got to talk about how that relates to our purpose and how if we start with identity, our identity, then the rest will kind of align. So thanks for such a great conversation. I can't believe we have like, more to go. We've got other things to do. Like, we're actually becoming friends. This is the whole point. It's the best. After thinking about our conversation last night, I'm feeling really encouraged about how we're becoming friends and finding some answers to our big questions. We're halfway through this journey, and Allie and I wanted to check in with Will about what we're learning and get his thoughts on where we go from here. Wait. All right. It's calling. Okay. What's up, y'all? Hello. Hey. Good to see y'all. Good to see you, you too. too. Me and Allie are grabbing coffee. We are just hanging out. I think we're gonna meet up with our friends tomorrow. We'll meet up with you again later, but we just wanted to check in, okay? Okay. We have a few questions. And the first would be, last night I had a bunch of company at our house. We we're kind of trying to process this whole adulting thing. Um, and this phrase kept coming up, this identity in Christ. Anything you could share on that would be helpful. Many times we, we try to make identity in Christ 
too, you know, lofty and high and it's very simple. So while we're all different, uh, we actually have Christ's fingerprint on us. And so that's how we actually say, like, that's our true identity, is that Jesus, because of his sacrifice, what he did for us, we have his, his print, his fingerprints on our lives. So how do you go from, like, knowing what scripture says about you to believing it? Oh, great, great question. Your knowing and believing can be based off of how you feel, right? So many yeah. times, like, what we believe is based off of what we feel. And so for us as followers of Christ, we can't be based off of, our identity isn't based off of a feeling, it's based off of a feeling. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then as you do those things, you, you will, it's going to go from here to here. That's why we call Will. Yeah, that's, that's why, why we call yeah. Will. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh, thank man. you so much. We're going to talk through some more of this, um, and I think we'll catch up with you later this week. Yeah, looking forward to awesome. it. Awesome. All right, have a good day. See ya. All right, we'll see y'all. Peace. For me, being completely transparent, as a Christian, creative believer, there seems to be like this line in church where they're always saying, it's not about your feelings. And like, you hear that so much, but like, Hearing it in this context makes it way more applicable. Knowing that like the Holy Spirit doesn't change and He lives in you, like that's way more applicable to kind of process my feelings through. So I'm thankful for that. No. Yeah, I feel like sometimes people are, when they say that, it makes me feel like I'm not allowed to have feelings. Right, right, right. But I think it's just like being aware of your feelings yeah. and then realizing that even though I feel a certain way, what's true doesn't change. Right, but all right. Absolutely. I think this has been a fruitful conversation. I, I feel more like an adult. I always feel more like an adult after we talk to Will. <laughs> At least for the next five minutes, I guess. Right. We'll see. As I unpack our conversation with the group and with Will, I keep seeing how identity, friendships, and purpose go together. Ultimately, when you know who God says you are, it helps you become more confident in the things He's called you to do. 